EPCO Educational Topic Number 13, Postpartum Care. Miss Polly Partum has just delivered her baby 30 minutes ago and her placenta 15 minutes ago. In this video, we will review how Miss Partum's body will transition to the non-pregnant state and how we can provide optimal care for women during this time. The objectives of this video are to review the normal maternal physiologic changes of the postpartum period, describe the components of normal postpartum care, outline the topics to cover in postpartum counseling, and lastly provide appropriate postpartum contraception. Prior to her delivery, Polly Partum's uterus weighed approximately 1,000 grams and had a volume of 5,000 cc. This is in comparison to the non-pregnant uterine weight of 70 grams and a volume of 5 cc. There are obviously many changes that will occur to Polly Partum's body in the postpartum period. Let's review them by system. In the immediate postpartum period, the uterus contracts down and returns to the pelvis by two weeks postpartum and is at its normal size by six weeks postpartum. Lochia, or the vaginal discharge of the postpartum time, goes through three phases after delivery. Initially, it is menses-like blood, known as lochia rubra, and this may last for the first few days after delivery. The second phase is lochia serosa, a lighter, more watery discharge which will last for a few weeks. The last phase is lochia alba, a yellowish-white discharge that may persist for six to eight weeks. These are all normal and should be distinguished from malodorous discharge concerning for infection. Polypartum's vagina and vulva will likely be very sore, especially if she has had a laceration with her vaginal delivery. Most women will need some sort of regular analgesia for the pain, and usually over-the-counter medications are sufficient. Vaginal tone and pelvic floor muscles gradually strengthen, but they may never return to the pre-pregnancy state. Pregnancy, regardless of mode of delivery, is associated with incontinence and pelvic organ prolapse. Kegel, or pelvic floor exercises, may help women during this muscle recovery phase. Polly's cardiovascular system has been revved up during pregnancy, with cardiac output increased by 30 to 50 percent and circulating volume increased by about 30 percent. Approximately 1,000 cc's of volume is lost during delivery. There is also a large fluid shift from the extravascular to the intravascular space, leading to significant diuresis. Normal cardiovascular function returns about two to three weeks following delivery. Moving on to the coagulation system. The human body has procoagulant and anticoagulant pathways with the goal of a balance between the risks of forming a blood clot and the risks of bleeding. Pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state with an increase in procoagulant factors. This protects the body from excessive bleeding at the time of delivery. The risk of venous thrombolic event is increased during pregnancy and is especially increased in the postpartum time. The balance is restored at approximately six to eight weeks postpartum. During pregnancy, there is increased blood flow to the kidneys. This leads to an increase in the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. Also remember that the creatinine of a pregnant woman is usually around 0.8. The GFR will stay elevated for two to three weeks after delivery. Now let's switch gears and talk about how to best take care of polypartum during her postpartum period. Here you are, medical student extraordinaire, ready to take care of your postpartum patients. You remember that your attending, Dr. Dave Marzano, had a handy trick for remembering the important aspects of postpartum care. Remember the seven B's of postpartum care. Breast versus bottle. Determine her method of feeding and encourage breastfeeding as much as possible. The American College of Obstetrician Gynecologists and the American Academy of Pediatrics both recommend exclusive breastfeeding for at least six months. Bladder. Ask about urinary retention and incontinence. Some women may have slow return of bladder function secondary to nerve compression during delivery or from the anesthetic effects of regional anesthesia. All women should urinate within six hours of delivery or six hours after catheter removal. 25% of women will also have stress urinary incontinence during the immediate time after a vaginal delivery. Number three, bowel. Has your patient had a bowel movement? Women taking opioid pain medications or those with a third or fourth degree laceration should be offered a stool softener. Number four, bleeding. Ask about volume and presence of clots. Review expectations about length of bleeding and discharge. Number five, bottom. Ask about perineal pain or irritation and examine the perineum if there are any complaints. Ensure that appropriate pain medications are provided. Remember that the postpartum blues are very common in the immediate postpartum time. See if she has any risk factors for developing postpartum depression, such as a history of depression or poor social support. Discuss warning signs of postpartum depression. And lastly, number seven, birth control. It is important to discuss this because approximately 15% of non-nursing women are fertile at six weeks, and approximately 50% of women will resume sexual intercourse prior to their six-week follow-up visit. If a patient is breastfeeding, she is partially protected against pregnancy. However, the breastfeeding must be exclusive and every three hours, and the patient must be amenorrheic. 
Typically, combination estrogen-progesterone contraception is avoided while breastfeeding because of the fear that it may hamper milk production. However, it is considered safe for breastfeeding once milk supply has been established. Progesterone-only forms of contraception, including the mini pill or Micronor, Nexplanon, or the progesterone IUD will not affect milk supply. If she is not breastfeeding, then she may be placed on any contraception. However, a combination estrogen and progesterone should probably be started two to three weeks postpartum to decrease the thromboembolic risk. This concludes the APCO video on postpartum care. We have reviewed maternal physiological changes, the components and what to discuss in postpartum counseling, and appropriate postpartum contraception.